summarise what you see as the key prevention and management activities that a head and neck cancer patient watching this can follow in order to try and prevent or minimise damage from radiation to their mouth and teeth. So the key to prevention of um, the, the most problematic dental disease um, is going to be tooth decay in these dry mouth patients, which can then lead to such rapid breakdown of the dentition of the tooth that needs to be extracted, uh, which in turn can cause this nasty side effect. So you want to prevent tooth decay at all costs. And the key message is cut down your sugars, particularly the processed carbohydrates, not only in amount of sugar that you're consuming, but also the frequency with which you consume the sugars. So every time you place something that's um, got sugar in your mouth, the bacteria in your mouth will feed on that, metabolize it, produce acid as a waste product, and that acid is what weakens the tooth enamel and makes teeth decay. The trouble with the dry mouth patient is the normal checks and balances that are in the saliva to moderate your bacterial population in the mouth aren't there anymore. And so you get opportunistic bacterial species, types of bugs, that happen to really thrive in a very acidic environment at the expense of the normal, what we call commensal organisms. And so these species of bacteria do very, very well in a dry mouth environment when you're consuming sugars. And so you get very, very rapid decay rates the sort of decay that you wouldn't see ordinarily. You only see this decay in very, very dry mouth patients. So you've got to cut down your sugar intake. You've got to cut down the amount of sugars and the frequency of sugars. Of course, the problem is head and neck cancer patients often feel nauseated as a result of their treatment. They've often got no appetite as a result of their treatment. The chemotherapy can cause issues. They lose their taste. Um, they lose their saliva and their ability to chew the food properly. And so they're often forced to take frequent small meals throughout the day. So that in itself is a problem, the frequency of the eating. The other issue is the saliva isn't working as well. So the salivary buffers, which neutralize the plaque acids, aren't working anymore. And it takes a lot longer for the saliva to return to a neutral pH, so a neutral level of acidity. So you end up in a situation where you've got a, patients who are consuming multiple meals Often they have to have highly sweetened or highly processed foods because they're nice and soft and easy to manage. Um, they create this acidic environment in their mouth for much, much longer than they ordinarily would were the saliva glands working properly. And so you get a very, very rapid breakdown of teeth unless you take steps to mitigate it. And, of course, fluoride plays a very, very important role, both um, uh, self-applied and professionally applied fluoride. There are also um, calcium phosphate preparations, um, new medications these days that uh, help supplement the action of the fluoride. There are artificial salivas to create feelings of, of comfort in the mouth. Um, so there's a whole lot of preventive measures that can be undertaken, but it all takes time and some of these products can be quite costly uh, and it requires a lifelong commitment. It's a kid's commitment and it's money. Uh, and, and we will show uh, some pictures of the bioteen range uh, uh, that I got to know well as a patient. Well, uh, Pixes are like little brushes you can put through your teeth. There's flossing. Uh, there are oh. particular kinds of mouthwash. Uh, I had some fluoride, some trays made that I could put squirt fluoride in and squish it in and wear it. But, again, I'm a dentist's daughter and it was a, it was a, a busy activity for, yes, right. for yeah. a good 18 months of my life. Could I just add one thing to what you've said that makes it even challenging, just for newer dentists or others watching this who may not know, as head and neck cancer patients, the radiation also affects our swallowing and many of us lose the capacity to swallow and some mm. of us for a period of time are nasogastric fed or they actually put a tube through your stomach. Now, mm. I managed to avoid that, as some do, but uh, as you say, I had to... Um, work very hard to maintain my weight. I lost 20 kilograms in six weeks, and obviously that's not a healthy thing to do. And so I was given a list by my dietitian of what to eat, and it was all sweet. In that acute phase, it has to be because you have to maintain your weight. You've got to get enough um, nutrition to help facilitate healing. Uh, you know, significant weight loss during treatment is a, is a 
poor what we call prognostic indicator for outcomes. So you've got to maintain the weight. And so all that advice that you're given by the dietitians in the acute phase is crucial. You then got to switch gears completely once things are stabilized and ignore all of that and just stick to your main meals, cut out the sugars, cut out the acids in your diet as much as you can. Make sure you're cleaning, as you say, flossing, cleaning interdentally, um, whether it be with brushes or, or whatnot, um, and just maintain a really good meticulous preventive um, regimen to protect these teeth. And this is part of what the dentist should be doing as post-radiation follow-up, really emphasising the preventive aspect of things and showing you where you're missing with your cleaning, showing you how to improve that, discussing diet with you, discussing um, uh, applying in high-strength fluoride um, gels and creams and the like. Could you just again uh, say a little more about those high-strength fluoride toothpaste that you have to get the pharmacist to get from the back of the surge of their, their rooms? Fluoride comes in many different forms and it's important that you um, ingest it uh, in all its forms. So fluoridated drinking water, brushing with a regular fluoridated toothpaste. For dry mouth patients, you can get this under-the-counter high strength um, 5,000 part per million fluoride tooth, which is five times the normal concentration of fluoride. But um, the constant um, exposure to fluoride is critical, as is um, very, very careful and meticulous uh, brushing and removal of plaque from tooth surfaces. And so brushing at least twice daily, ideally after every meal, always use a very soft toothbrush that, that applies to everybody. Um, it seems a bit counterintuitive, but the hard brushes actually do more harm than good because you can actually strip away the soft gum. You can cause the exposure of the root surfaces, which can then lead to sensitivity, can then lead to early decay on those uh, softer gut, uh, root surfaces. Um, but like I say, the hope is that with increasing advances in radiation techniques, that will get better and better at preserving the very sensitive parotid glands which produce that watery saliva and that in turn will improve oral comfort and um, you know, dental decay 